Hello everybody, I'm CT, and welcome to the CT Gaming Lab. Today we're going to be jumping into Baldur's Gate 3. I'm very excited to be playing this game. I've never played D&D before, and dabbled a bit with the Pathfinder games and early Baldur's Gates. So while I'm not experienced in D&D, uh, the tabletop D&D, I believe we'll run into minimal problems. I played through the beginning of this game up to the first encampment already, but I wanted to start a series with my own custom character. Um, anyway, I hope you all enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe if you do. I'll be playing through this game and release more videos as we progress through. It's always really gross to see. Let's jump right into character creation. So to be completely honest, I've had major restartitis. Um, <laughs> I've gone through the ship part probably like four times now. So this is the first. This is the last time, I swear, uh, because I'll be RPing what I actually want to RP. So we're gonna kind of go for a. Um, a roguelike character. Imagine a high elf barbarian, would be crazy. Yeah, so we'll be making a rogue character. Uh, I guess we can go for the elf. The only, the other option I believe in the in the origin classes was Asterian. Asterian's pretty like chaotic. Though. Very self centered, kind of more of an evil type character. And I did not want to roleplay an evil playthrough for my you know, full playthrough. So I figured we'll just go for a kind of a neutral, good, maybe Robin Hood type character. Maybe not, maybe not hold them to the same morals of, you know. Maybe some of the nicer variations of Robin Hood, but we'll see. Let's see. A criminal, so not a criminal. Charlatan, deception, sleight of hand. Could do kind of like a Han Solo type character.
This would be just so funny. Full hero, maybe not. Noble. You grew up in the wilds and you survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prowess and understanding. I kinda like that. Hmm. After surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most of very little. Yeah. I think we'll go with Street Urchin. Slide of hand, stealth. Okay, here are our abilities. Oh, right. <laughs> I thought it, for some reason I saw Dexterity and I thought it was strength. I'll go with the recommended. Um, since I, you know, I haven't played through the whole game. Again, I've only gone through the beginning area. Let's see. Oh, I didn't even... Can I customize how she looks? Up right here. Okay. It's literally glaring at me. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Where to next? Hmm. Let's hope the locals are friendly. Be wary. There's magic. What? Hmm. Health. Be wary. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. Got that. So we're street urgent. Ur <laughs> urgent. I think, uh, go for a scar. Got the maturity of, like, you know, having have lived a difficult life. Maybe not old, but what is this? Oh, we don't want to get. Uh, <laughs> into trouble with that. You know, I have been picking Heteropromia with some of the characters I've made so far, but honestly, I'm kind of digging the default green on green here. I actually really like this default hairstyle too. You know, I think we're going to go here. I've never been one to spend too long in character creation. I think we'll go with that. Um, of course, we get to go with my go-to name with Raya for female characters. And after I exhausted that name, I have no idea what to pick for females. Choose one. The Guardian, huh? I think it'd be cool. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea what the Guardian even is. I think it'd be kind of cool if, like, my Guardian was... Oh, you know? I could kind of go for this. Kind of like RP, like some like half work picked me up from the bad place that I was in, taught me how to survive, looked after me. I like the red hair though. Let's just change the hair. Maybe like dark green. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really like any of this. Um, Makes her look kind of 
not as rough. I kind of want her to be more of like a rough character. I, I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, I literally have no idea what the Guardian is. So we kind of make like our guardian like a um Oh yeah. We can make her a big remarkable. Truly. Oh wait, we just straight up made them a dude. Uh okay, let's not do that then. <laughs> I guess identity is different than the body type. Uh Change the hair color, actually. I don't really know what <laughs> what limitations you have when it comes to like hair color, but I think that's fine. Okay, I like it. Venture forth.
head. All right, man, that beginning cutscene is just ahead. so freaking amazing. Dead. First time I saw Good. it, I mean, it doesn't even matter. First time, second time, third time, fourth time. Every time I see that cutscene, it's just so freaking good. Larian has really outdone themselves in this game. Might be useful. Now, again, specifically for this ship part on the Nautilus, I think it's called, on a Nautiloid. Um, <clears throat> well, let's see. Yeah, Nautiloid. If it looks like I know what I'm doing, um, it's because I do. <laughs> I have gone through this area so many times already. Well, four times. To be exact. So we're going to be going through this beginning area a little bit quicker. Uh, I hope. I was a little bit um, apprehensive about starting another playthrough. Um, but I really did want to do this series, and I did want to play a character that I felt passionate about and felt connected to. Flash behind your eyes. But the only reason why I was apprehensive is because I know that with RPGs, I mean, when making new characters and restarting the beginning, I mean, I get, like, major burnout. But this game has pretty been pretty awesome so far. to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return. They return. A newborn. Born new from this husk. You know no creature like this. One that is more brain than person. Is that a brain? The enemy. So many enemies. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. We're gonna take it out because of curiosity. Hey, easy dub. The brain lifts from the skull. So disturbing. Do you notice an opportunity? You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. Dex roll this. Actually, I don't know if, like, winning skill checks gives you more XP. Might as well. That was a crazy roll. Nat 20 into 19. It just slowly goes down for the rest of the playthrough. And then I only roll once. creature seems unaware of your interference. It relaxes in your hands. We're bound to get some bad RNGs. <laughs> we are free. Our freedom is ours, friend. The creature pauses, listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm. But the helm, we are needed.
The brain tenses, as though querying an unseen advisor. Do you not hear it? We will not survive here. We are needed to navigate. We are needed to leave this realm. We are going to the home. Could I have a little brain, buddy? Don't think there's anything else in this room. Least favorite, uh, least favorite part of the beginning of the game is doing the uh, the doing the hop bars for everybody. But you only have to do it once, and you can just update it from then on. Not a big deal. until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. As for that thing, it will remain tame as long as it believes we are thralls. It may be of use in the fight to come. must have advantage on them. Also works if you have an ally within 1.5 meters of the target. You don't have disadvantage. Okay. Oops, let's uh, <laughs> not attack our team. Swift and lethal. You bow or you break. Oh my gosh. Mizell is like so freaking strong. Important is ever easy. I'll strike you down. So, some of you might be like, oh, why are you using your short rest spells? I mean, so on the Nautiloid, you actually, um, 
You have a bunch of these like healing pods over here. And they replenish. Uh, they act like a long rest, I'm pretty sure. So, it's a good way for you to kind of speedrun your way through the Nautiloid section of the game. You don't have to feel bad about using your abilities. Chest? Speaking of controls, I should technically be playing on a controller since, um, you know, I have some kind of like I have some flare ups in my wrist from time to time, uh, from a lot of time at the computer. Um, but honestly, I just prefer the UI for what's it called? for mouse and keyboard, because when you switch over to controller, I mean, the UI completely changes, which is... I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know? Uh, controller versus mouse and keyboard. There's certainly less stuff on your screen on controller, and that could be a plus for some people. But I know for games like this, it's like I actually like seeing stuff all the time. All right. I know that... Go ahead and do our do. <laughs> do our do. We'll go ahead and do our custom hot bar. We're gonna have to do this for like every companion that we get. It's because I like having everything on one screen. Yeah, we only have to do it once. I know there are tabs here that you can press, but it's always a little bit more work for me. Maybe we'll, I mean, maybe we'll utilize, like, again, I don't know how many spells you get total in the whole game. So maybe we'll end up getting so many spells that they take up this entire thing and actually have to use the other top bars. Never a dull um, moment. But for now, I mean, this is what's been working for me. Um, so it's just quick and painless, I get to loot their bodies. Uh, if you press this one, it makes them come to life and then they'll, uh, they'll attack you. I guess, I mean, technically you get like extra XP for doing that. Maybe I should have done that instead. Some key. Yeah, I know, Shadow Heart's back there. How many hosts of these In the Mind Flayer pod. Go over here and grab the... Uh, whatever it is that you need to grab. The Eldritch Rune. A rune? But for what? Keep the log open. Nice. So you take that key, you can open up this chest right here. Gives you an onyx, lots of money. Um, I think I'll take the necklace too here. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing Alt there, just in case. Just so you guys know. Press Alt to see everything. At least that's the default key bind, I'm pretty sure. The console appears dormant. Let's get Shadowheart out of here. The console hums to life. I don't have any Arcana. Um, oh yeah. I don't think that you get any more experience for passing these skill checks. At least maybe not all of them, but I know you don't get it from this one. Suddenly you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. That one's really close. You feel here. the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You 
I have to say, the voice actress for the narrator, I mean, she is just absolutely amazing. I mean, I think so far, I think the voice the voice actors in general are really good. Sometimes the microphone sounds kind of weird. I think maybe they were recorded, like, during uh, the pandemic. So maybe they're using, like, at-home mics. But other than that, I mean, the voice acting itself is, I think it's really stellar. Thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness because you have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. A bad racist. I got a problem with Gith Yankee. More that Gith have a problem with everyone else. But there's more important matters right now. Survival. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Shadowheart. One moment. What was that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. I love the beef between Lazel and Shadowheart. Can't wait to see how that'll evolve over time. Alright, let's <laughs> Can't afford to stay. Alright. Back to this, it's only one more. Fast at doing that. I'll take this way. Back into it, I think. Put this on. I can only put it on. Or right, I'm on on one person. Put it on our rogue. Heal. We are nearing the hill. Once inside, do as I say. No time to rest. Okay, okay. Here we go. Should mind my step. Big auto save. I gotta remember to quick save. First, though, let's end this. Let's, uh... sixty percent, sixty five to seven in phase. Time to deal some punishment. Big. Nothing will stand in my way. That, and then we have a first sneak attack, right? No. 
thought I was. Also works if you have an ally within 1.5 meters of the target and you don't have disadvantage. Is that not 1.5 meters? Probably not. Oh wait. Can't give up. Not now. Walk a little bit closer. Another fight. Then Let's I can go. Really use this yeah. That's the way to do it. Once return. Okay. Here goes nothing. Zelda's like absolutely insane. Just with her. Like, look at this. Like, she jumps incredibly far. She's the tankiest member on your team. She does a lot of damage. She has high accuracy. so impossible. It has like insane dodge rolls. get some extra XP Make by way. killing these guys. I mean, I have 13 turns. I could try to kill that guy again. I mean, I've only tried it once, to be fair. He still has... I mean, our Mind Flare only has 39. He has 112. Attack is freaking insanity. It is so good. Alright, three more. Boom! Right, we're gonna stick him right next to the transponder. And then I think, honestly, we're gonna try to freaking kill this guy. Yeah, I mean, his, his dodge rolls are freaking insane. Yeah, it's not gonna just freaking work. 50-50? We 
we hit the 50 50s. I can get high around on this guy. These boots have seen everything. I'm ready. Got to press on. Him for like absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, okay. This one. This one How much damage did I do, dude? 10 damage? I mean, it's alright. <laughs> I mean, this guy's gonna get one tap though. not have a single time. Remember what I said about high accuracy? Ah. Uh, his homies are on the way. I don't know, bro. Like, if we get this kill off, it'd be huge. A saving throw. Oh, here's the man. Ah, I see. So his <laughs> his base number is higher. Oh no, that was his D20 saving throw roll plus four. I mean, yeah, I guess we could hit him with that. I mean, like his accuracy is garbage too. I am fury. I am death. Come on, we gotta hit the forty percent at least once, right? Surely. Boys. This creature can't activate the transponder. Oh shit. No choice but to keep going. Well. On my way. Victory awaits. I think Lazel can go really far. <laughs> Are coming. Oh. oh my lordy. I did not know that our boy could not do it. But he can act as a meat bag. Alright, we're doing it. We're out of here. The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time.
As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. All right, back to the beach. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through. But it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. Okay. All right, we made it to the beach, ladies and gentlemen. I think we will call the video there. And then for the next video, we will explore this area. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm excited to do this playthrough, excited to go through this game with y'all. Um, if you enjoyed the video, once again, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. Um, I'll be releasing these videos as we, you know, kind of go through the content in the game. We'll find these stopping, stopping points or maybe we'll just keep going. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.